Hey guys, let's solve lead code 74, which is search a 2D matrix. So you're given an M by N integer matrix and they're calling that matrix. And that has two different properties. One, each row is sorted in non-decreasing order. So that's a way of saying it's increasing and there might be duplicates. And the first integer of each row is greater than the last integer of the previous row. So this is basically just a way of saying that it looks like this, where it is increasing from left to right as we do this zigzag pattern down the array. Okay, so given an integer target, we need to return true if the target is in the matrix or false otherwise. And you must write a solution in big O of log of m times n. If we say t is equal to m times n, that's just the number of elements in the matrix. So it's big O of log of t, where t is the number of elements in the matrix. You need to make sure it runs in log time complexity. Okay, so let's look at an example to make sure we understand, given this matrix right here, which is represented by the 2D array, the list of 1 through 5, 7, and the list of 10, 11, 16, 20, and 23, 30, 34, 60. We are looking for the target of 3. And we can see just from the picture that that actually is in the matrix. So all we have to do is return true. And in this example down here, we have the same matrix, but we're looking for a target of 13. 13 is not here, where it should be is right here, and we'll talk about that shortly, but it's not there, and so we just return false. Okay, so I've just taken that same matrix in the previous example, and we'll say that the target we're looking for is 13. Okay, so that ultimately would return false because that doesn't exist. Now, the easiest thing to do here is just forget about the fact that this is a 2D matrix. If we stretched it out into basically a long vector, these would be the different indices. So if you flattened it out, you'd have zero all the way up until the number of elements that we have minus one. If we have M is the number of rows, so that that's equal to three and n is equal to the number of columns, which is four, we'd have, I'll call it t. t is the total number of elements in the matrix. And so that is three times four, which is equal to 12. So if we were to flatten it out, we know the indices are just zero at the beginning up until the length minus one, which is 12 minus one, which is 11. Now we want to do a binary search, and that's why I have kind of just written the indices like this. These are not technically accurate for the matrix. It is accurate if you were to flatten it out. And if you were to flatten it out, doing a binary search is pretty easy. If you haven't seen my video on binary search, then you can check that out. But here, let's pretend for now that we could just do a binary search. Well, what would we do? Well, we'd start with a value L, which is equal to zero. The first thing, we'd get a value R, which is the last one, so that is the length minus one, which is 11. So we basically have an L here and an R over here. And to get that log runtime, we get the very clever M, which is equal to L plus R, the integer division that by two. That's how you get the middle. And so in this example, it would be zero and 11. So that's just 11 integer division by two, five rounded down, which is just five. So that's going to give you this number right here. And since there's an even number of elements, we have that the middle is kind of either two of these elements and we're gonna get the left one. So we have the index of five, but we aren't able to access the actual value of this because this is a fake index, okay? This is just something we have in our mind where if they were flattened it out, the index would be five. But that's not what we need. We actually need two indices. We need its row index i, and we also need its column index j. Well, it turns out that given this index and these values over here, we can actually deduce both the i and the j. We can get the row and the column number from these three things. How do we do that? Now, these values are all row zero, these are all row one, and these are all row two. Why is that the case? Well, for zero, one, two, and three, those all give a value of zero. But then suddenly when we get to the value of four, that is when four, five, six, and seven, those are all giving a value of one. And then suddenly when we get to eight, that is all giving a value of two. So all of these are also giving a value of two. Now it turns out that if you take M, which is really just our flattened index here, and you do an integer division by the column number, that is going to give you the row index, okay? So we'll write that as a formula here. I, the row index, is M divided by N, 
integer division. Take any example. Say that we took our five right here. Well, we want that to give a value of one to get the row index of one. If you have the M value of five, and then we integer division that, well, we have four columns, that is going to give one and something. So we round down to get one. If you were to take any of these examples here, these would all give a value of zero. If you were to take any of these, those will all give you a value of two. Okay, so that's the formula for the row index. How do we get J? Well, anything in this column is going to be zero. Anything in this will be one. These will be twos and these will be threes. And let me just kind of move that over here for a second. It's really just M mod the number of columns N. So if you took six, for example, well, that we want to give a column index of two. Well, that is the case. If you take six and then you mod that by the number of columns, that is going to give you the value of two. So this is the formula for the row index and this is the formula for the column index. So given an M, we can get our row and column index. And so we can get the value that we're actually trying to look at here. That is simply the matrix, which I'll just call mat here. That is mat at the row index I at the column index J. And since we have indexed that value and we're actually implementing a traditional binary search here, that's really all you have to do. We just follow the same rules of binary search, which is if you found what you're looking for. In this case, we would just end up returning true. If we didn't, find what we're looking for, then we go to the right spot. And I encourage you to watch the binary search video for that. It's simply that if our value we're looking at is too small, well, then you would want to look in the right side. If the value is too big, you would want to look in the left side. And we'll see in the code how to do that. Okay, so let's write our code. We get M, which is the number of rows that is equal to the length of the matrix. We would get N is equal to the number of columns, which is the length of matrix at zero. Is this actually guaranteed to be in bounds? Yes, because M and N are both guaranteed to be at least one. So if we access the first row and we get the number of values in it, that is safe and it's gonna be the number of columns that we have. Okay, we'll get our value T, which is simply the total number of elements in the matrix that is going to be equal to M times N. And then from that, we can set up our binary search. So we'll say L is equal to zero, the position of the first element, and R is the position of the last element, which is T minus one. We're sticking with our flattened versions of the indexes, and we'll just convert it inside of the while loop. So in here, we'll do while L is less than or equal to R, we need the less than or equal to because we're saying while they haven't crisscrossed, if we ever get to the point where L and R crisscross, then we couldn't find it, so we'd return false. And we do need the equals sign because we want to check when they are equal to each other, we want to check the same element. So while L is less than or equal to R, we get our middle index M is equal to L plus R integer division by two. I'll get I, which which is the row index that is equal to M integer division by N. And we get the column index J, which is equal to M mod N. And from there, we're able to index and actually grab our value. So we'll get, I'll just call it the middle number, the value at the middle index. That is the matrix at I and J. Then from here, it's just the rules of binary search. We have if the target is equal to the middle number, that means we actually found it and therefore we'd return true. If it wasn't, well, then we need to look in the right spot. Otherwise, if the target is actually less than our middle number, well, that means our target is to the left of where we're looking. So we need to adjust our right index. That means we want right to be M minus one. We search to the left side. Otherwise, we want to search to the right side. And that means setting L to be M plus one. That actually implements our binary search. Really the only difference is that to access our middle value, we need to calculate our row and column index from that middle index. We can access that and then we just do the normal binary search. If we get out of here, it means our L and R have crisscrossed as in we couldn't find the target and we can return false. If we were to run this, we'll see that it works and zoomed out, here is all of the code. So complexities. Well, the time complexity of this, what are we doing? We're doing a binary search that is over all of the elements. And so that gives a log complexity of the number of elements there. And that is equal to big O of log of M times N or big O of log of T. And the space complexity here, we're not really using any space here. That is just a big O of one, so constant space. I think that's a really cool problem and a lot easier than it might seem. Drop a like if you found this helpful and have a great day guys. Bye bye.